Okay, our next speaker is, uh, is coming from South Africa, and it's, uh, his name is uh, Francois uh, van uh, Neukert, and it's, he's from Stellenbach University. And uh, he's been active in the Computer Go group, um, and he's going to give a short talk about something that I don't know anything about. <laughs> Welcome to my talk. 2012 International Go Symposium. This talk is about parallelization of the dominant computer Go algorithm, Monte Carlo Tree Search. This talk is based on joint work done with the collaborators shown and partially supported by the National Research Foundation of South Africa. This talk will describe the basics of Monte Carlo Tree Search, abbreviated as MCTS, and the main approaches to parallelization of MCTS. Then, some practical results for MCTS parallelization on multi-core and cluster systems will be discussed, and finally, we consider some new developments in MCTS parallelization. In Computer Go, various techniques for playing the game of Go are researched. Even though Computer Go research has been in progress for decades, the top programs running on the best hardware are currently only able to achieve a ranking on a 19 by 19 board of about 5 Dan KGS. The algorithm that is currently the most popular for Computer Go is Monte Carlo Tree Search, or MCTS for short. One of the advantages of MCTS is that, compared with classical algorithms, it is much easier for MCTS to make use of parallel hardware, such as multi-core processors and classes of computers, or supercomputers. In order to play Go and select a move to make, Computer Go engines will typically create a tree structure representing the next few moves in their follow-ups. This can be compared to how humans read, you consider a move and its responses, and then your response to those moves, etc. Ideally, we would create a tree that expands until the end of the game. However, due to there being more than 100 possible moves in most of a 19 by 19 game, this tree grows very quickly as we look further ahead. This very fast growth means that it is not feasible to search through all possible sequences exhaustively to find the best possible move, and instead we must rely on other techniques for computer go. This typically means relying on some sort of evaluation function to determine which position is more favorable at the end of possible sequences, forming the leaves of a tree. This tree only looks a number of moves ahead and not right to the end of the game. Classical methods try to emulate the process that humans follow by encoding Go knowledge and using it to evaluate a position. However, as every aspiring Go player knows, while improving in the beginning is relatively easy, it gets harder and harder to assimilate new knowledge as one gets stronger. And in fact, humans are particularly good at assimilating new knowledge. These classical approaches only manage to achieve a relatively moderate level of strength, typically in the single digit queues. While this might seem quite strong to many of us, even those who have played Go for years, it is still clear there is a very long way from there to the quality of professional play. In 2006, Computer Go researchers showed that Monte Carlo methods combined with the classical tree search approach yielded some very promising results in Computer Go. The approach used to combine these techniques was to use simulated semi-random sequences of moves until the end of the game, called playouts, to evaluate board positions and use these evaluations to decide how to explore the game tree further. These playouts involve playing random legal moves for each player starting from a given position until the end of the game. At the end of a playout, it is easy to determine who the winner is, and then it is simply a matter of repeating this process a number of times to get a meaningful evaluation of a board position. For example, given two positions, if a playout starting from the first position results in wins 60% of the time, and playout starting from the other position only results in wins 40% of the time, then it is likely that the first position is superior. This technique is then extended to form Monte Carlo Tree Search that uses a tree for planning ahead and playouts for evaluating positions. MCTS can then be broken down into four parts that are repeated over and over, usually thousands of times per second. Selection, expansion, simulation and backpropagation. Let's have a more in-depth look at this. The diagram on this slide shows selection taking place on an example tree. The nodes in the tree show the results of previous MCTS iterations that pass through them, with the root of the tree representing the current board position. Selection is the process where we descend down the tree to find a place to start a playout. 
In the selection in this example, we see a position after a black move where playouts were wins for black 3 out of 5 times and then a position where a single playout was a win for white. Selection must balance exploration versus exploitation. Exploitation is when we select moves that are currently the most promising and exploration is when we select other moves that currently seem worse but may eventually turn out to be better after more search. This can be compared to how a human might read in a Go game. We first look at the variation that first springs to mind and then if that variation isn't favorable we look at others. The original selection approach used was UCT which stands for Upper Confidence Bounds Applied to Trees. This approach favors exploitation by preferring to select nodes with high win rates but also encourages exploration by giving a bonus to the win rate for nodes that haven't been explored as much. After selection expansion takes place by adding a new node to the tree, as shown in the diagram on the slide. This new node represents a move in a sequence of moves. In this way, MCTS can be said to be expanding the current tree and reading further ahead with each iteration. This expansion ensures that we have a more accurate result near the top of the tree, where it matters most. Next, the simulation part of MCTS takes place. Playout is done from the position associated with the new node by making moves at random for each player until the end of the game. At the end of the game, it is straightforward to score the position and determine who the winner is. The diagram on the slide shows that a playout has finished and the result was a win for the player to move next, which is black in this case. To improve the overall strength of MCTS, some heuristics are often used in these playouts to make them less random but instead more representative of what might actually happen in a game. Typically, area scoring is used in playouts as dead stones can be captured without changing the result of the game, making it easier to score. Once the playout is done, the result is propagated back up the tree, from the node added in the expansion to the root of the tree. We see this happening step by step in the diagrams on these slides. Now that all four of these steps selection, expansion, simulation and backpropagation have been completed, a single MCTS iteration has taken place on the example tree. This only adds a small amount of information, but typically thousands of these can be performed per second, which can lead to a strong computer go engine overall. Even though MCTS is a relatively new technique, it has already surpassed the classical methods and is currently the dominant algorithm in computer go. As mentioned earlier, the top MCTS engines are currently about 5 DAN on KGS. There are two ways to improve an MCTS engine. Either the algorithm itself must be improved, for example by using advanced heuristics, or by increasing the number of playouts done when searching for a move. An increase in playouts has shown to result in an increase in overall playing strength. This increase can be achieved in two ways. By increasing the thinking time per move, or by increasing the rate of playouts. Parallelization aims to increase the rate of playouts by making use of parallel hardware such as multi-core or cluster systems. Multi-core systems have become commonplace hardware in the past few years and is what you might find at home if you own a dual or quad-core machine. Multi-core systems typically have a shared pool of memory. Cluster systems, sometimes called supercomputers, are typically only found in research environments and at large tech companies, but they have much more raw processing power. These systems all have a number of CPU or execution nodes, and the task of parallelization is to effectively make use of as many of these execution nodes to run an <coughs> algorithm, in this case MCTS. The top engines all make use of MCTS parallelization to achieve their top rankings. There are three main approaches to MCTS parallelization, tree, leaf, and root parallelization. There are various approaches to parallelization because the best way to parallelize the problem depends heavily on the underlying architecture. In our case, whether the system is multi-core or a cluster. Let's have a look at these three parallelization approaches. In tree parallelization, we have a single shared tree and each execution node works on this tree simultaneously. This is particularly well suited to systems with shared memory, such as multi-core systems. In-tree parallelization, 
each execution node performs all four parts of the MCTS iteration. All the top MCTS computer engines make use of tree parallelization for multi-core systems. In leaf parallelization, the work is divided between one master and a number of slave nodes. The master node maintains the MCTS tree and delegates the work of doing playouts to the slave nodes. The slaves perform the simulation step and the master performs the other three steps of the MCTS iteration. The potential issue with leaf parallelization is that there is only a single master node that must perform a significant portion of the MCTS iteration and this could potentially become a bottleneck. In root parallelization, each execution node maintains its own MCTS tree and performs iterations independently. However, all the execution nodes periodically share relevant information about promising moves between themselves in order to keep each execution node up to date. In root parallelization, each of the execution nodes performs all four steps of the MCTS iteration. The potential issue with this approach is that execution nodes can be unaware of new information in the trees of other nodes and duplicate work that has already been done somewhere else. Something that must be taken into account with parallelization is the parallel effect. This is the strength penalty experienced due to the change from a sequential to a parallel system. An example of this is, if there are two nodes working on the same tree, they might both perform a plowed from the same position, whereas if a single node did two plowed sequentially, the result of the first plowed would mean that another position might be selected for the second. This parallel effect is even more pronounced if the nodes are not working on the same tree, such as when using root parallelization. At this point, you hopefully have an idea of how MCTS and its parallelization works in theory. Let's have a look at an implementation. Oakfoam is an open source, cross-platform MCTS engine for Computer Go, developed mainly at Stellenbosch University. It has parallelization implementations for both multi-core and cluster systems. For multi-core systems, tree parallelization is used, while for cluster systems, root parallelization is used. Both of these parallelization approaches were chosen in the view that they would scale the best on the available hardware. This MCTS parallelization has been evaluated to see how well it makes use of parallel hardware. In order to do this evaluation, a number of tests were performed. First, we tested to see if there was an increase in playout rate given more parallel hardware. If there was an increase, we then tested to see if there was a strength penalty due to the parallel effect. If there was a strength penalty, we then tested to see what the overall strength increase was with parallel hardware. The reason for these tests and their order is to evaluate the strength increase from parallel hardware in the most efficient manner. With each of these tests performed, they were repeated with different settings in order to determine the optimum. On multi-core systems, tree parallelization showed a linear increase in playout rate, close to the ideal, with the ideal being that using n nodes would increase the playout rate by a factor of n. No strength penalty could be found, which means that within our tested range, the strength increase of multi-core parallelization is also close to ideal. Preliminary results show scaling on multi-core systems extending up to many more nodes, but these results have not yet been confirmed for this implementation. On cluster systems, root parallelization showed a good increase in playout rate, but tests showed a severe penalty due to the parallel effect. A strength comparison was done, comparing the strength using root parallelization on a number of execution nodes with the ideal strength increase. The ideal strength increase was determined by emulating ideal scaling by using more thinking time per move. We can see that while scaling on 9x9 is poor, on 19x19 scaling shows the best strength improvement at 8 nodes, where it has a strength equivalent to 4 nodes if scaling was ideal. This means that an implementation using 8 nodes will beat a single node implementation about 85% of the time. From these results, 
we can see that MCTS using tree parallelization scales linearly on multi-core systems up to 8 cores and that root parallelization allows MCTS for 19 by 19 to scale on cluster systems up to 8 nodes where it achieves a strength improvement equivalent to ideal scaling on 4 nodes. While MCTS tree parallelization for multi-core systems has shown to scale very well up to a large number of nodes, cluster systems have not yet enjoyed the same success. However, recently there has been some new research into MCTS parallelization for cluster systems. Virtual wins and losses have been used to improve scaling on cluster systems as demonstrated in Pachi, another open source MCTS engine for Computer Go. Depth First UCT modifies MCTS from a best first search into a depth first search and takes advantage of the fact that MCTS tends to focus on promising parts of the tree considerably more than other parts. Distributed UCT leverages transposition table driven scheduling to divide the tree between execution nodes and minimize repetition of work. Transposition table driven scheduling uses a hash function to generate a unique identifier for a board position in order to assign a tree node representing a position to an execution node. It could be considered a hybrid between leaf and root parallelization and distributed depth first UCT modifies this into a depth first search. UCT tree split uses transposition table driven scheduling to divide the work between the execution nodes in a cluster system. While these new approaches have shown some successful results in parallelizing MCTS for cluster systems, only the virtual wins and losses in Pachi have actually been applied to Go. It remains to be seen if any of these approaches will yield positive results for Computer Go. In conclusion, MCTS has allowed Computer Go to surpass the classical methods and demonstrated very good scaling on multi-core systems. However, there is still much room for improvement of MCTS parallelization on cluster systems. It remains to be seen if Computer Go will be able to make efficient use of some of the huge processing power we see today in supercomputers. If it can, it could potentially result in a significant jump in strength of the top Computer Go programs. Thank you very much for listening to this talk. For more information on this topic, please feel free to contact me or have a look at the link shown.